Um, we have, I don't know if it's my turn or not, because I was told I'd step out of place. But anyways, we have the privilege of hearing uh, our uh, good friend and longtime friend, Pastor Bill. Pastor Bill has, you guys know, he's, he's an instrumental in uh, uh, our pastor's life. They've known each other since they were kids. Um, pastor, my wife and I met Pastor back in like 89. Uh, he taught a, he may not remember it, but he taught a uh, youth leadership class to our church when we were living in West Valley. Uh, but Pastor Bill has always had a passion for spreading the gospel. Uh, and it's uh, one of the early examples of that is our pastor was led to Christ through Billy's uh, testimony in his life. So Bill, could you uh, just share with us your always interesting message? <laughs> Check, check. There we go. <laughs> All right. It's good to, uh, now if you're in the front row, you're in the spitting section, so you might want to watch out. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. Just real cool. Um, uh, some of you may not have heard this story, but when I was at Glendale Nazarene Church, um, one day I got a, um, I got a call from um, the uh, pastor of a um, um, of this church um, way back. Bill Buckner? Buckner? Bittner. Bittner, okay. I get a call from him and he asked me if I knew of any youth pastors that might be looking for a job. Well, what's crazy is the day before, Pastor Curtis, he was in Michigan. In what city in Michigan? New York, Warrenwood. Warrenwood. And, uh, and he had said, do you know of any churches that are in Arizona that are looking for a youth pastor? This happened the day before Bill called me at Glendale Nazarene. And then I said, what? Well, I got a really good friend that's up in Michigan. All that's up there are mosquitoes. <laughs> and uh, I can't remember what I said, but pretty much it was like, you might want to give him a call and then see if things work out. And then that was the first time that he came here as youth pastor with Bill Butner. Buckner. Bittner. <laughs> Mr. Bidwell. Mr. Bid. So, so it's just really kind of cool how that kind of all worked out. And then he went from here to New Mexico to a church. Um, Gallup. Was it Gallup? Clovis, New Mexico. And then he came back here then as senior pastor and he's been here for, you know, 500 years. So uh, <laughs> you guys are great. First of all, you, you're... First of all, it's really great that you gave him a break called a sabbatical. It's only been his second one. You're supposed to get one every seven years. So, um, and it's kind of true to fitting that you're supposed to just go and relax and do nothing, but it's really hard to just do nothing, you know? It really is. So it's, it's fitting that we would see him in, in Haiti doing a really cool ministry. Jamaica. <laughs> they flew over. They flew over Haiti. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that's pretty good. So, um, I just want to say one thing that would like to really make his whole sabbatical is if every seat in this house was almost full next week. And the only way it's going to happen, tell the person beside you, we need to call or invite six other people. Go. They're not all going to come, believe me. <laughs> but if everyone called six and only ten percent or twenty percent, that would like that would like really make his day. You know, it really would. So show up better for him than you did to, than you did for me today. Uh, I'm just I'm just messing with you guys. I'm just messing with you. Today we're going to uh, today you. You, you might have to put on your thinking cap a little bit. And for some of you, it might be a little too much. But I'm going to try to simplify it for people like me. And uh, with, with the, with like a really cool topic. It's been, it's been on my heart for probably two months now. And uh, so I've just been waiting to come back to get you guys. And, uh, so um, that's good. I do want to say that my wife, my lovely wife, Crystal, is here. So, and then someone... Someone gave, someone gave her some cookies. 
Who was that? Someone give her a nice cool bag of cookies. Okay, and she won't share them with me. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> At least they get crumb on the way home, so that'll be good. I wanna do I wanna I wanna go back to the very basics, the very simple simplified thing. Sometimes people may ask me, well, how do you prove there's a God? Or how where did where did God come from? Now there are volumes and volumes of books of, of great theologians that have actually will we'll, we'll break this down in a lot more ways than I'm gonna to do today. But I just want to kind of put it all together. And uh, so we're gonna talk about the big base, baseball verse. Does anybody know in the Bible where the big baseball verse is? Just raise your hand if you know. A couple of you. How many people want to make a guess? You don't know for sure, but you think you, you know where the big baseball verse is. Anybody? Go. Oh, she's got it. Genesis 1-1. And Genesis 1-1 goes like this. Did you know that uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth? You get it? Tell the person beside you, I get it. <laughs> now tell them I really don't yet. But, uh, <laughs> in the big inning. Oh. All you Dodger fans have no idea what that is. Because <laughs> all your innings are big. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> How many people have been to the Dodger Stadium and had a Dodger dog? Yeah, a couple of you. I, uh, I was on a fast for 30 days. I, I can tell you now, but I couldn't tell anybody at the time. But when I was at the Dodger Stadium, I could not eat a Dodger dog. And, but, but I could eat soup. And it took me forever around the Dodger Stadium to find, up somewhere there was a restaurant in, in an upper section, and I got soup. <laughs> so, but you know what, when you're on a fast, you can, it, it's amazing what you can put in a blender, how many steaks and uh, things like that, you know, solid foods you can, you can get in there. What I like about this verse is this, okay? These 10 words, this, this is how deep, but yet how simple our God is, okay? Not the God of other things. I'm talking Yahweh. I'm talking the God of the Bible, the God that I believe in. And this is so simple that there are those that try to overthink it. There are professors. There are people that just don't want to admit that there's God. You can't use the G word. The G word is not woke enough for a lot of people. But the God I serve takes complicated things and makes them super simple. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There are three things that take place right here. First of all, okay, who's my first volunteer? Here we go, big guy. You stand and hold this just for a second. Anybody know what that is? We'll turn the show the other way. <laughs> it's a battery. <laughs> turn around. Not you. There you go. Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it. Just hold it up. Now, hold it still. Now you turn around. <laughs> I, love I love it. All right. Even, even, you know what the old saying is, even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? So, uh, okay, so that's time. Time has, time has, so, so in the beginning, so God says in the beginning, boom, it starts time. Time has three characteristics. Time is... That's okay. The first two words of our Bible sum up creation, and they. Okay. Should we go to time? Here we go. Gotcha. Time is past, present, and future. Okay? Now, we are all in a three dimensional world, which we're going to talk about in just a second. But time is like this it's like if I had a, a, a rope going across the sanctuary like this, and God started time, and that time is going like this. And you and I can't stop time. We can die in our own time. But I mean, God's timetable is constantly going. It's been past. It's right now. And now. And now. 
and now, so we all get it, and now, for those that didn't, and future. That time is constantly moving. That clothesline of time is what you and I are stuck in this time that's constantly like this. God is not trapped in our little timeline. God is 10th dimensional. That means he has, so let's say the line is coming right here. And right at this point, in this microsecond, God's, God has another line that goes forever in both directions. And that timeline is God hearing your prayers. And at that exact microsecond, not only does he hear your prayers, he does his miracles. He heals people. Does that make sense? And all those are all different lines. So pretty soon, from the beginning of time to the very end of time, God in 10th dimensional, spiritual world, is able to crisscross our little timeline at all points of interest. So every this microsecond, he's answering prayers. In this microsecond, he's answering prayers. So pretty soon, it's just God intersecting in our little timeline. So pretty soon, there is no line, it's just God. It's a big mass. Does that make sense? Is that, I mean, so when I was younger and I kind of figured it out, I thought, wow. This isn't just some churchy little thing and some churchy little songs and some churchy little Bible stories. No, there's like depth to it. You see, scientists will tell you time, space, and matter are the three things they can't argue with. Your professors cannot argue with time that we just talked about. Because it's, it's past, present, and future. The next thing is space. Okay, who's, who's my next volunteer? All right, here we go. Okay, thanks. All right. No, no, there's nothing here. Sorry. <laughs> so here's the deal. We have time. We have space. In the beginning, God created the heavens. So here's the heavens. The heavens have length, width, width and depth. Okay? So what happens is, this has heights to it, it has depth, it has length, it has all three factors. See, God has simplified so things, he's even made it, all we have to do is remember three things about space. So here's what happens. You can't have space, this had to, ha it had to have been created. It's called a continuum, where time, space, and matter were all created at one time in a purpose. And it gave it to us in the Bible, your first 10 words of your Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens, which has length, width, and height. Now here's what happens. This is three dimensional, does that make sense? If I go like this, you can see all three dimensions. If I take it and I aim it just at a certain angle, you can't tell how deep it is. If I math mathematically flip it again, it's a straight line. If I flip it one more time, getting out of three-dimensional world, now we're talking 10th dimensional God. So how was Jesus able to go like this and go, Ch -ch 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 -ch, and he showed up after he died? Because he wasn't stuck in a three-dimensional little body like you and I are. Tell the person beside you, you're stuck in a three-dimensional body. <laughs> now go to the gym and work out. <laughs> So what happens is, oh, you, you put your, you, okay, there <laughs> you're making everybody hungry and I have to finish earlier. So, uh, so you, have, you have length, width, and depth, those three. Time was past, present, future, space is length, width, and depth, and then the last one is matter. Okay, Sam, come up here. But God simplified this so much. This used to be a bowl full of ice. Now there's half ice. And the ice is doing what? Melting. It's melting. You see, when you have matter, you have solid, 
liquid, which it's getting to, and if we were here a couple more days, it would turn into a gas and evaporate. Again, three things that God simplified in the first ten words of your Bible. Time, matter, and space. So here's what happens. Here's what else is kind of cool. This is getting off a little bit. There is not any more or less water on this earth than when God created and made it happen. Oh, we're running out of water. We are. What happens when it when it's in a water form? It turns into a... Okay. Then when it becomes a solid again, it turns into rain. And it's just a continual circle. Here's what's also crazy. There's not any more or less water now than when Jesus was here. There's not any more or less water now than during the flood. You see, you and I can't get in a laboratory and we can't make water. We know what its properties are, but you can't make or destroy water. Because if I heat it up, I haven't destroyed that ice cube. It's turned to liquid, then it's turned into a gas. It's still there. What we have is we have water management where experts guess that this February we're going to get X amount of rain and therefore they let it all run out to the Pacific Ocean. And then when it doesn't rain in February like they thought it was going to, they have a water shortage. So there's not any more or less water now than the flood or when Jesus was here. So those of you that are drinking water or coffee have water in your coffee. Maybe that's the same water Jesus drank. I know that's getting way, way crazy. But see, here's what happens. It's crazy because it's so simple. Then in the, then the very first Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created, that's creation, the heavens and the earth. Earth is matter. And it's constantly changing. Isn't that kind of cool? Now, what is this? Thank you. Thank you. Let, let's give all three of our volunteers a hand. Thank you. It's what I want to call today the three-in-one universe. The three-in-one universe. The three-in-one universe reflect God and His Trinity also. So tell the person beside you, I only have to remember three today. Time, space, matter, they all have three properties. And those three properties are so simple that even in the very first Genesis 1-1, you don't have to get into all the other people. I mean, you can stop right there about how complex my God is and our God that we serve. But the three-in-one universe, God reflects in his trinity. You have the God, the Father, Son, and you have all three. Now some people are like, well how can you explain that? How can you have all three? When I have an egg, if I had an egg right here, the egg has three properties. It has a shell, that's God, kind of holds it all together. <laughs> then you have the inner white, and then you have the yolk. The yolk is where life takes place. Our life begins because of Jesus Christ dying on a cross, pouring yoke on you. Does that make sense? In this, I mean, listen, we haven't gotten into ten, ten words into the Bible already. It's the three-in-one principle of the universe. That God created us, also He created you and me as three basic parts. God created us in three basic parts. Um, and it goes like this. You have those, a couple years ago, about three, four, five years ago, I did a class here on functional trichotomy. Okay, anybody know what dichotomy is? No. Di means, tri means. Well, here's what happens. God made us. He made the world in threes. He also made you in three parts. You have a body. Okay, you have a body. Your dog at home has a body. Then God made us with a soul, a mind, an emotion, and a will. Your dog at home has a mind. 
and an emotion and a will. When you tell him to come here, he doesn't have to come here. He can run off. So he makes up his own mind. How many of you at home, you have a pet that kind of runs the house? Come on. Okay. Just don't let it become your God. You're okay. <laughs> so you have body. You have a soul. The word where your mind, emotion, and will connect is what's called your spiritual heart. Your spiritual heart. Not a physical heart, but a spiritual heart. When I die, my body doesn't go to heaven. No matter how many times you go to the gym, your body's going to start doing all that stuff. I twisted my ankle last week, and you guys prayed for me this morning. It feels good already. They said like three months in a cast. I'm like, no, oh, it's been a week. Crystal's let me stay home, and I said, keep it up all week. So what happens is, my body is not, gonna, is not what goes to heaven, and my mind, my emotion, and my will is not what goes to heaven. It's where they all three converge and call my spiritual heart. And what God, the creator of the universe, that set everything into motion, which we've talked about, three, 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 that same God cares about your spiritual heart. Man looks at the outside, but God looks at your heart. And so what happens is, Again, it's the three principles. Body, soul, and spirit. And where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Is it in things? Is it in stuff? Is it in the person beside you? Or is it, does your heart really show your true love and care for what God wants to do in your life and do through us and help us in every situation? All right, am I going slow enough, hopefully? All right. Again, if you just get on Google and just do time, space, matter and start, you can, you can spend days and days. Um, let's go to the next picture if we have one. Maybe we don't. Yeah, oh, yeah, we do. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> Here it is. Even more amazing, and the universe is amazing, is the historical fact that God, creator, after purposely creating the time, space, matter universe, the three we talked about, chose to enter into the human person of Jesus Christ. One well, of the single most provable facts that there are. People don't want to admit that. Or they'll make up their own Jesus. Have you seen some of the crazy Bibles that are out there? You know, some people are like, oh, I'm King James only. Then I'm New King James. Then I'm New King James after the third King James. And then, and then other people are like, no, I'm, there's, there's things called paraphrases. Anybody here have a living Bible at home? I took one to a religion class one day. Oh, man. I got eaten alive. I was just, I was just going out of my apartment. I'm in Olivet. I'm going to, I, I, gotta, hurry, I, I gotta grab a Bible. So I grabbed a living Bible. I went into class and, oh, man, Dr. Otis says, just let me have it. The, 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 the living Bible is a paraphrase where one guy, pretty much on his way to ride the train every day, just wrote it in his own words what he thinks the Bible means. Have you ever heard of, of the Hawaiian Bible? It's crazy, isn't it? There's another one I just heard the other day. There, was a, there were two, there were two uh, teachers on one of our, our bus trips, and they were talking about there's a Hawaiian Bible, and then there's another one called, and it's pretty much out of Atlanta, Georgia. And it's like, yeah, Peter decided to go over there and get you some chitlins and, and stuff like that. And I'm like, what in the world are they talking about? So, there, so in other words, you want to be careful that, that like whenever you study a Bible, if you take your Bible and you look at the very front, it'll tell you how many people, theologians, have input to make that translation correct. So the King James is in there. There's a lot of good parts that are part of that. There's also the New American Standard. The New American Standard is most correct to the original Aramaic, which is what Jesus spoke. So in other words, it's, and then, and then what's cool, I have a Bible that's about this big. And the reason why it's so big is because you take one verse and it shows all four translations of that one verse. So when I get the Living Bible, this is real crucial, this ties in with Jesus. That when I get the Living Bible, it says that when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, it says he prayed 
so hard that blood came out his pores. It's called hamadrosis. If you have a hippopotamus and you get them out of water, pretty soon their body breaks down and blood will come out of their pores. It's called hamadrosis. Well, if Jesus shed his blood in the garden, he didn't need to go to the cross. See how crucial that is? Him dying on the cross, shedding our blood, was what had to fulfill Old Testament prophecy. So if I read the Living Bible, and it says that Jesus shed his blood in the garden, he didn't shed his blood on the cross for me. Pretty crucial, huh? So, read the Living Bible as if you're just like reading a newspaper. But if you really dig down deep into what it's saying, you want to find out what translation really kind of fits. Because what happens is, in John 1, 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and behold, His glory, the glory is only the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So what happens is, Jesus dying on the cross helped to make it so that it's beyond just the in the beginning God created. But it's the three principles that we're talking about. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the most important part is this. Today, a lot of you here probably are believers, and you, you, know, you understand who, who Jesus Christ is, but just in case there's somebody that's, that's not here, or the next time you want to share with somebody, think about the three principles. Take them to Genesis 1. It's got it all right there. My God is time, space, and matter. And your professor at your school cannot argue with time, space, and matter. Oh, but I have space. Well, you know what? Space is constantly growing. Time, space, and matter aren't just like, <sighs> no, they're constantly moving. That ice is constantly melting. Does that make sense? It's cool. That God made things so simple, and yet it's so complex. And that same God that made things simple and complex also gave you a spiritual heart that you can give to Him. Amen. Everybody just bow your heads just for a minute. If you're in the room today, and, and, and maybe you've never really given your heart to Christ, you've given your heart to the church, you've given your heart to things, you've given your heart to... Other things that, that actually aren't, aren't tied in with Jesus. All it takes is a simple prayer. And all you have to do is just in your mind, say this prayer to God. Say, God, I'm a sinner. I need your grace. I need you to come into my life. Help change my life in the ways that you can use me. Thank you for saving me. In your name we pray. Amen. This week, when you invite those six people to come next Sunday, you may get an opportunity just to share your faith. You may go, well, what's, what's this whole Christianity thing about? Don't give them the whole sermon. <laughs> just give them whatever God leads and puts on your heart to share with that person. Um, when Crystal first got saved, you were how old in the church? And a lady came and prayed, asked the one to pray with you. She was 14 years old. Do you remember that lady's name? Do you remember what she looked like? Do you remember what she said? And what do we use as an excuse to not share our faith? They don't know who I am. They don't know my name. They don't know about me. When God leads you to do things, He'll move in to that body, soul, and spirit. He'll move into that mind, part of your spiritual heart. And He can, he can pierce and go through and make other things. All He wants us to do is just to be kind of like, duh, and make it happen. <laughs> Tell the person beside you, duh, make it happen. Duh, make it happen. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So uh, I think we have someone else that's going to close out. Are we closing out? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds good. By the way, I can't wait until the Baja 500 gets finished out front of the church here. 
I came in from this way, and we went, so we, so we went past the barriers, and we got in this neighborhood, and then all of a sudden I'm like, stop! And there's a big, big, big drop off, of 40 feet, that we would like tipple over in the car. So it'd be, it'd be nice when they get this all finished out. But remember, next week, bring all your friends, all six are going to invite, bring them in this way into the church, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you. job interview, the human resources officer asked a young engineer fresh out of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and what starting salary are you looking for? The engineer replies, in the region of $125,000 a year, depending on the benefits package. The interviewer inquires, well, what would you say to a package of five weeks vacation, 14 paid holidays, full medical and dental, company matching retirement fund to 50% of salary, and a company car at least every two years, let's say a red Corvette. The engineer sits up straight and says, wow, are you kidding? The interviewer replies, yeah, but you started. <laughs> Anybody doing job interviews right now, you get why that's funny. <laughs> so two things really quick. Um, one was if, when you were talking about your big Bible that has the references, I don't know if you're familiar, if any of you use a Bible app on your phone, generally they will have a way to split and you can have two versions at a time. So if you use a Bible app, like when you're at work or something and you don't have your physical Bible with you, there's ways to split. So say you want to read King James, but you're like, sometimes it's tricky. You can reference it to the NASB and stuff like that. So um, I'd be happy to look through and help you with that. But it's so cool because then you can watch it too. Um, anyways, um, we're going to close the service. So by Facebook, we'll, we'll see you later. Miss Lydia, would you come up? Um, so, are we good? Awesome. So we, um, a couple of things to close, we want to always remind you that um, the offering plates, or the offering boxes back there, we, um, your regular ties and offerings and things um, go in there. We just thank you for your <coughs> generosity. We know the summer months are hard, um, but God has been so good to us. We actually already had one unit replaced at the beginning of the summer because people were so faithful. We have the money and already are waiting for the second unit. So I just want you guys to know to give you a little update. It's already been ordered, but we're waiting. We're just waiting apparently because of all these new builds and all these houses, air conditioned units are hard to come by. So we're currently waiting. So I just wanna, as soon as we get the call from the air conditioning company, they have permission to place the unit on the kids wing, which is the next one that has to be replaced. Um, and then we are praying for the rest of the funds for the fellowship hall. So please just remember to be generous and faithful. But we have a separate thing that we need to bring before the church. And so Ms. Lydia is going to explain the situation, okay? So we hear um, Clarence and Brenda. Clarence has been sick for maybe two months now. He has what Brenda described, uh, the doctors described as the worst valley fever they saw. Oh, no. And he's, uh, his, ox his lungs are not operating at 100%, and that um, he's not able to work. So we're here, we're a family, so we're here to, if you can donate, there's a box back there, and you can just put their name, uh, Clarence and Brenda, on it. going to be a plate by the door. Oh, a plate by the door. So we would really appreciate if you guys could give whatever you can give uh, this Sunday, next Sunday, or whatever. So he's probably not going to be able to work, according to the doctors, because of oxygen. He's on oxygen now. He's at home. And so because we are the family of God, the Bible said, when you see your brother in need, uh, it's our responsibility. Well, I'm not going to say that. We, will, we want you to be liberal. We want you to give what you can, and they would greatly appreciate it. We were given permission by the family to have Ms. Lydia speak on their behalf. So we're actually going to pray for them right now. 
Um, and like she said, um, he's unable to work and he is the, the one who brings in the income for their family. And so they are, um, this month has been tight, but after this month there will be not much. So we, we need to step in and help. So there will be a plate at the back. Anything that goes in there is going to be considered a love offering for the family. Please make sure your regular ties and offerings and AC funds and things go in the box so we can keep them separate. But let's pray for Brenda and Clarence. Um, and again, we share this with you as a family, but it's always important that we walk humbly. So this is not something that we need to share with others, but they did tell us that they would greatly appreciate it and we're okay with us saying something today. So let's pray for them and let's close. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, Lord, for Pastor Billy and his life and for Crystal and Jordan. Lord, we thank you for their family. We just pray blessings on them. We pray um, traveling mercies and just a renewed sense of purpose and passion. And just, God, we know you're just so faithful to be with us, Lord. We pray right now for clearance for his body, Lord. We know, God, that you can heal, that you can heal too, even better than he was before, Lord. And so we just pray for his lungs. We pray for just any sickness to leave his body and for his lungs to fill up with oxygen and, Lord, just not needing to rely on anything but the body that you've given him, Lord. We pray for Brenda that you would just be near her heart, God. Comfort her in this time, Lord. Give her the energy to care for someone. Take such an emotional and mental and physical toll, God. I just pray that you would fill her up. God, I pray that you would um, that you would just provide, Lord, because I know that you're the God of five loaves and two fish, Lord, and that you care, Lord. You care where the sparrows, um, where they land, Father, and you care so much more about us. So we just pray, Lord, I thank you for the generosity of this church family, and I thank you, Lord. I pray for those like myself, like, Lord, who need healing right now. I just pray, God, in your mighty name that you would come and do what only you can do, Lord. And I pray, God, for anyone in here today who is needing comfort in their hearts or is going through a season of stretching and growing, Lord, we know that those seasons can feel difficult, but you are with us. You are our comfort, our protection, our provider. We can be still and know that you are God. We thank you, Lord. And I just pray, God, that as we get ready, Lord, to go out into our world, that we would not forget the mighty God that we serve, that we would not forget your marvelous works and your power, that we would not forget your grace. Lord, if anybody today needed to, to know you and chose to know you, Lord, I pray that you would help us to love them. We are a church full of imperfect people, God, but we love you and we know that you can do perfect things even in imperfect places, Lord. That's why Jesus came. I pray, Lord, that you would protect us, lead us. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, as you leave, if you do want prayer, there's always um, people up here who are ready to pray with you and to love on you. And then John is going to be right there with Miss Sherry for the love offering. Um, thank you. Have a great week. We hope to have lunch with you next week. Um, and welcome back, Pastor Curtis.